Hey spooky friends, welcome or welcome back. I'm Sarah, this is Thrills and Kills Booktube, where we talk about horror, true crime, thrillers, and everything dark and twisty. So we are quickly coming up on Halloween, so I felt I would get festive for you today. I've got my little devil horns, my Haddonfield t-shirt, spooky candle. Today, I'm going to talk about my unpopular opinions, horror and reading edition. So I just wanted to let you know that I am someone who has very strong opinions. I've always had strong opinions. I've always been one to speak my mind ever since I was a little girl, but I want to do this respectfully. So if you and I disagree on something, that's fantastic. That is what makes the world go around and what makes life interesting is when we have different viewpoints. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments if, if you feel differently about one, many, all, all of these things from me. Or do you feel the same way and do the same things annoy you? So I'd love to hear it, but let's make sure we keep it friendly. So without further ado, let's get into my unpopular horror and reading opinions. All right, starting off strong, right out of the gate. I'm gonna say, for me, I believe that quality over quantity is what matters. I know we all love to see videos with book hauls or wrap ups. People are saying like, the 25 books I read this month, my 50 book book haul. Yes, those are the videos that do better on YouTube. Um, uh, we all know that, but I do not believe for one moment that if you were someone who reads 100, 200, 500 books in a year, I've seen videos of people saying they read 500 a year. I don't believe for one moment that you could off the top of your head tell me anything significant about any of the books that you've read in a year. I know that's probably a strong opinion to have, but it is, it's what I believe. So if you read a hundred plus books in a year and I randomly pulled a book off of your list of 2022 and said, okay, tell me about it. What, what did you think of it? What did you rate it? Um, give me like, you know, your over your thoughts, your pros and cons of the book. I just think that someone would really struggle to be able to do that without going back and looking at their notes. That's just how our human brain works. There's only so much working memory and and that we can hold in there and again i've, I've literally seen videos of people saying they read 500 in a year so i you got to be cranking those out so how much are you actually thinking through the book and really absorbing so that's the way i like to read if you don't necessarily care about absorbing anything or or analyzing or critiquing on a deeper level by all means do you boo but that's that's my first unpopular, probably, opinion. This, I don't know if it's necessarily unpopular, but I do see it debated a lot, particularly over on Reddit, which is like the trash can of the internet. But I think that audiobooks definitely count as reading and count towards your yearly reading goal. I know some people say it's a totally different skill. You're listening, you're not reading, but I think what, what the important piece is and what counts is that you are absorbing a story and you are able to critique it, to understand the overview themes, plot structure, character arcs, what you liked, what you didn't like. I, I know some of that same argument could be made for a movie, but a movie is a whole other separate uh, <laughs> field of entertainment unto itself. A movie is gonna be what, 90 minutes? Um, 120 minutes, something like that. Whereas audiobooks, even on the short end, are going to be six hours. Some of them, gosh, some Stephen King audiobooks are like 24, 36 hours. In my opinion, those definitely are the same and count as reading. Number three, talking about Stephen King, um, I'm not a Stephen King fan. I think Stephen King, his books make better movies than they do as books. The stories are great. He writes some stuff that the story is very entertaining. Some of them are downright scary. I really like the settings, the characters, but I just cannot get into his writing. He goes on and on and on and it's so dry. I just want to get to the point. And even for example, I love Misery. That's one of my favorite movies. I can't read the book. I've tried so many times. I love Dolores Claiborne. I can't do it. I've tried to read them physically. I've tried audiobook. I can't do it. It's his writing style. I just think that his stories translate better onto the screen. And I love to see what a really capable and creative director and cast can do by taking his books and translating it into viewing media for us. Sorry, I'm never going to be a Stephen King book fan. I'm also not a Grady Hendrix fan. I've tried a few times. I don't think he's funny. And I don't like the way that he writes female characters. I So I have read 
um, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, and I have read uh, the Final Girls Support Club. So granted, oh no, I've also read Horror Store, Horror Store, but I don't think I finished it. So let's say like I'm basing this opinion off two and a half books, which is that fair? I don't know. I feel like that's enough, but definitely it's not his whole body of work. I, I just don't, I don't jive with it. You know, there's some authors you just don't like their stuff and that's fine. I think he's talented. I think he writes good books. They're just not for me. So I will say I'm willing to give my best friend's exorcism a try, but I don't know how that would work because then you've got two main female characters. And one thing I don't like about him is how he writes female characters. Sorry. Okay, next up. Uh, Verity is not and never will be a horror book. <laughs> I am happy for Colleen Hoover. There was recently a piece about her, I think in the New York Times about how popular she's become. And I read about her backstory. So I'm very happy for her that a woman or anyone was able to work hard and make a better life for themselves and their family. Uh, so in that realm, I'm happy for her. But on the other hand, I just don't think she writes good books. And so Verity is um, the only one I've read. Now I've read like snippets and reviews of other books, but I don't read romance. I read horror. And Verity has been um, advertised as a horror. It's not. I just feel like her writing, I've said this before, I feel like her writing is juvenile, which maybe that's what she's going for. That's fine. And I don't mean YA because YA doesn't have to mean juvenile writing. YA can be sophisticated writing. And I don't like her characters and I just didn't, I didn't like the way Verity was written. A lot of the like smut sex scenes, they were just awkward. And I've talked about it, I'll link it below. I've got a video about books I really dislike. <laughs> and that was one of the four that I've really disliked. So I just, it's not horror. I don't know why people keep saying it's horror and putting it in the horror genre. It's not. Speaking of horror genres, um, I think uh, that the gothic genre of horror is the supreme <laughs> genre, subgenre of horror. It's it's where most of horror came from. It's our foundational text. And, you know, fear is very subjective. And the things that scare me and creep me out the most tend to fall under the gothic genre. And it's that creeping, slow descent into madness, um, just foreboding uh, feeling right like sending shivers up your spine and like looking over your shoulder that sort of a thing that to me is going to be scarier than like I read devolution okay yeah that's scary to think Bigfoot might come and eat me alive but <laughs> um, I'm much more scared by by things that are just a slowly creeping slowly turn up the dial on the sense of terror and so that's fine if you don't think it's the uh supreme subgenre of horror but then that would just mean that you're wrong and <laughs> we'll just have to agree to disagree which is then a great segue into my next unpopular opinion um i think you cannot fully appreciate a modern day horror book or um get the most out of it unless you have read the foundational classic text within the genre and i think you're doing yourself a great disservice by not going back and reading those even if in the end you don't like them so for example, um, Jennifer McMahon, The Children on the Hill, okay? This is supposed to draw inspiration from Frankenstein. What Moves the Dead is sort of a modern uh, retelling of the fall of the House of Usher. Or, you know, Rebecca is one of the more like modern classic um, Gothic haunted house or is it or isn't haunted house. Or then how do you read a modern day vampire book like, you know, Grady Hendrix without reading Dracula? So I think even in the end, if you hated the the classic, um, how can you then really appreciate the modern book for all that it is? How can you really understand how far the genre has come? What's changed? What do people in modern day find scary versus in 1818 when Frankenstein was written? That was terrifying because that's what people in the 1800s found to be scary. Obviously, our tastes have changed, <laughs> you know, almost you know more than 200 years later, rather. So again, I just think you cannot fully appreciate it for what it is, the genre for what it is, how far it's come, how it's changed, and you're just doing yourself a disservice, again, even if in the end you absolutely freaking hated the classic version. Put my props back. I also think it's perfectly fine if you prefer the movie version over the book. 
I uh, recently also made a video about The Exorcist and I do prefer the movie, the first movie, to the book for many reasons and I'll link that down below. I've said with Stephen King, I prefer the movies to the books. Misery, again, one of my all-time favorite movies. I have never been able to finish the book. I can't do it. So I know that's that's pretty um, like blasphemous for some people or some people say you absolutely have to read the book before you watch the movie. I don't think it matters either way. I think what in the end matters is that the author wrote a creative or they developed a creative story, creative characters, plot line, and it's up to you to determine what form of media you prefer to consume that story. And if it's the movie, I think that's totally fine. But again, some people are like die hard and we get really upset at that opinion. Also, I don't know if you can tell, I got this candle at Walmart. It was only like $5. It's a spine and then as it melts you can see like the wax is red so it's supposed to be like a bleeding spine but also the other day thankfully it wasn't lit <clears throat> i was moving some stuff around in my bookcase and it fell and i was like crouched down on the floor on like one of the lower bookshelves and it fell and the little um pointy part there it hit like right oh, it still hurts and it's still so full <laughs> so be careful if you buy this candle at walmart and then speaking of walmart my what is this nine ninth and last unpopular opinion. I have seen this throughout various social media platforms as sort of like a discourse on you should not buy your books in support from Walmart or Amazon as the two major ones, that these are evil corporations. And in many ways, I agree. And I would prefer not to have to support them if I didn't. I think it's great to support independent bookstores whenever possible. But I think there's absolutely nothing wrong for people where that is where they purchase their books from. And if you are someone who has always thought like, evil, we shouldn't support those. I just want to ask you to take a step back and think about this from someone else's perspective. So this is um, America specifically. I live on a farm. All my neighbors are farmers. I live in a very rural community. There is no independent bookstore. There isn't even a grocery store where I live. If I want to go to the grocery store, it's a 30 minute drive and my option is Walmart. If I want to drive 50 minutes, I can get to Trader Joe's, but with the price of gas and there's no public transportation, like you have to be someone who has enough disposable income. So again, I don't even have a grocery store. You think I have an independent bookstore? No, <laughs> I would have to drive at least an hour that I know of to get to an independent bookstore. And I will go because sometimes my job will take me down to that area and I'll support it. And when I'm traveling for work, I do like to see if there's independent bookstores where I'm gonna be. But again, that's someone who's living a very different set of circumstances from many other people. I have also spent a lot of time in Appalachia and let me tell you, many, many towns have no grocery store. If they're lucky, they have a Dollar General and that's where they're getting their groceries from. So if someone in that sort of situation or even myself, if someone wants to read, um, where do you think that they're going to get their book from? In many ways, Amazon and you can disagree, and this is kind of a bigger discussion than just books and horror, but in many ways, Amazon has been a blessing to people. If you don't have a store in your town, but you know you can order something on your phone and in two days or less, it'll be shipped to your, your front door, that is a blessing. If you don't have access to public transportation, if you don't have access to a vehicle, the price of gas is so high, it has been a blessing. So anyways, that's a really long-winded way of saying if someone's only access to books is through Amazon or Walmart, I would just caution you to maybe not make a snap judgment and try and understand what it's like to live in a community where you don't even have a grocery store, let alone access to an independent bookstore. And yes, I understand that there are independent bookstores that ship, but many people are not aware of that. Um, so again, I would just ask that you maybe Put your snap judgments to the side and think about it from someone else's perspective. Yeah, now you can really see that. I don't think that's so cool. That has been, was that nine? Nine strong opinions I have. I think some will be more popular than others. You let me know, please. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have any additional um, unpopular or strong opinions about horror and reading in general? I really love to hear from people what their thoughts are. So me know down below. I'm Sarah. This is Thrills and Kills book two. And if you enjoy talking about horror and thrillers and Halloween and everything dark and twisty, we'd love to have you here. Or we, it's just me. I'd love to have you here. So please subscribe and like this video. And in the meantime, stay spooky, my friends. Happy Halloween.